What up, leaguers? Welcome to the Spectacular Spoiler League. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City, Hazy Roman. As always, I'm joined by the Gotham Knight, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And today, today we are in the Hall of Spoilers to talk a little bit about, I can't even say it with a straight face, <laughs> Inhumans, Marvels and Humans. Yeah. And we're asking the essential question Is Maximus really the villain in Inhumans? Deep Voice. Inhumans is not good, bro. <laughs> it's not good, my You man. sure? Deep Voice, don't play games, brother. Don't play games, I mean, listen, Inhumans listen. Inhumans is not good. For the three fans out there, I'm sure they're holding out hope. <laughs> listen, we can't... You tell them, Deep Voice. We can't just throw the Inhumans in the garbage just yet. Or, or can I, we? I agree. I agree. Listen, I'm not going to throw them in the garbage, man, because we got a video to do. We can throw them in the garbage <laughs> after we do the video. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, the, we asking the question, y'all, is Maximus really the villain of the human? So, I mean... I guess, why why are we even bringing this up? The, the reason why we're bringing this up is because the, Inhumans hasn't done well enough to make us actually care about any of these characters. <laughs> with Maximus, man, I, I feel like the, the issue with him is that... I feel like the issue with all these Inhuman characters is that we haven't been given a reason to care about them, but... When it comes to Maximus and what he's trying to do with the Inhuman Society, whether or not he is sincere about it, I don't know. But I can't argue with the man's point. And that is the, the society of the Inhumans that is based on eugenics, man. It's basically a situation where they're saying that because we have powers, we are superior to you. And thus, if you do not have powers, you are in a lesser class than us. They are being treated like lesser class citizens. And the human royal family, you know, Maximus, his brother, Black Bolt, Medusa, uh, you know, Gorgon, Karnak, uh, Crystal, they seem content with this. And they don't see what's wrong with this. Now, maybe they may be taught that later on in the series. But for us, we see what's wrong with that, especially being people of color, man. Like, that's not cool when, you, when you're, you know, uh, essentially lesser, considered lesser because of your genes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Maximus appeals to that lower class in a way where he's like, yo, things need to change. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, man? How do you feel about Maximus? I mean, don't get me wrong. Dude definitely has some, you know, villainous things planned. But is he a villain because they say he's a villain? I'm like, he needs to show me that he's a villain. Like, it needs to be a situation where I'm like, yo, this guy is vile. I mean, we know he's got some mercs on Earth, like, straight up hunting in humans. And that's probably to manipulate the political situation on Adelan. But still... Yeah, I mean, what say you, D boys? You know, he it's it's much less about how they characterize him because he's out there. I mean, he's killing people and he's 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 uh, strong arming individuals. He gets like one, I guess. I don't know if he's a politician or a member of like a noble house. He basically, just tells him you got to do what I got, what I'm telling you to do, or I'm gonna kill you. And he kills him. He ends up getting him killed. Uh, and also, you know, there may be a revelation that he does have his powers it's just i guess his powers because his power has always been about him being able to manipulate people like he's able to yeah. get people to do what he wants but to your point i think the issue is not so much on maximus but it's on the main character like the other main characters the good guys how badly they've written them and characterized them the quote-unquote the quote-unquote good guys where literally we don't care about any of them and we see no reason to no. like any of them. Yeah, Black Bolt kind of grew on me a little bit because, you know, just his, his reactions. Mm -hmm. But still, this man is king of this nation yeah. and he's just letting it rock. Yeah, I mean, you, you bring up a good point. He's complicit. He, he's sometimes... Okay, if you look at, real quick, the history of the Inhumans, they were bad guys <laughs> at first versus the Fantastic Four. But then eventually they change him up and he's usually seen as a benevolent leader. But then as of late... Because Marvel likes to, you know, make hit their good guys bad guys. He did some things that were, you know, rather questionable. But generally, what they're going for in this one, it seems, he's he's a benevolent leader who means well, but is confronted with a difficult situation and he has to make difficult choices that don't, you know, he, he's not able to make everyone happy. He's not, I guess, totally stern and, 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 and evil, or at least the type of person that would subjugate a whole sex section of his people. Uh, and, and I think another problem here is it, 
I don't know. I, f- I feel like they dropped us off in the middle of like an episode or the middle. One hundred percent. Because I feel like there's there's something there's backstory there's something that we're missing here to really get us to understand the the history of the Inhumans and why they're they're okay with this why they let this rock like you know if he's supposed to be the main character the good guy and he doesn't seem like a, a character that's that flawed he's just flawed in the sense that he loves his brother sure um th- there's something that is odd here that again doesn't really mesh with what you're trying to get us to like about this character black bolt or any of the other characters uh whether it's medusa uh, or especially crystal who is it's just extremely oh. aloof and, and, and that makes it even worse. Again, you see people that they, they, they're they all up in rags and they live in, in just abject poverty. Meanwhile, Crystal's out here listening you know, to music on her, her Dr. Dre beats. And we're supposed <laughs> to feel bad about her when they you know, kick the doors down and try to, try to, I don't know, imprison her or whatever. Crystal's worse than a loop to me. Crystal is, she's a bigot, you know, and... You know, because she literally is dead to, dead to this girl's face, you know, when, you know, she was talking to this chick and, and she, you know, the, the girl who works for Maximus, mm-hmm. as well as Maximus himself. Yeah. You know, she straight up was like, oh, you guys are, you know, you're, you're just a filthy human type of, you know, type of That's talk. True. And it's just like the way, the way she was talking was just so condescending towards people who don't have powers that it was blind. And even Maximus kind of said it to her like, yo, like that was mad, like pig headed of you. And I just, to me, I'm just like, I, Crystal to me is probably one of the worst characters on the show. This character is just like way too unaware of what's going on around her. That is, it's it's frustrating. It's upsetting, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, go go on. No, I mean, I I I agree. I agree. I, you know, I have forgotten about that. How she just, because uh, again, this idea that they didn't start us off on the right foot. Because Crystal and I think Gorgon uh, and maybe even Karnak, they oh don't get me get to, don't <laughs> let me get to Karnak. But the thing is, they well, I'm coming. They him. take those jabs at Maximus that oh he's because he's doesn't have powers supposedly he's filthy or something. He's just like hey, shut your mouth, Maximus. You don't got powers. We don't you don't we don't need to listen to what you have to say. Yeah, your opinion doesn't matter. I mean Karnak, Karnak. Like, I was disgusted by Karnak, man. Mm-hmm. Like, he straight up belittled, you know, a servant girl at the dinner table, you know, by saying, you know, using his power to, to you know, see the weakness or flaws and things. And, you know, he basically, she was interested in him. You know, clearly she was looking at him, smiling at him. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, D-Boys, well, girl, it looks like that at me. <laughs> that's, that's going to be, you're going to be the best man at the <laughs> wedding, my man, because it's, it's happening pronto, brother. But, yeah, you know, he, he just kind of disrespected her and was like, you know, like, <laughs> pointed out all the flaws that she, she, she has or flaws that he considers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, basically said in two days, I don't I won't even like you anymore. I'll just want to. He specifically said, I, I'll, I want to kill you. You know, I know probably wasn't literal, but the fact of the matter is they build up Karnak as a dude who speaks literally. Yeah. So it's like when he said that, I was like, oh, it was a little much. And Gorgon just kind of like, what? You, <laughs> man, you got to chill out, man. That was you're so crazy, cousin Karnak. And I was like, bro, that's crazy, rude, bro, and disrespectful, man. And I just couldn't, like, I couldn't rock with it. I was just watching the show, and I was just like, yo, I know it's a TV show, but I'm like, they need to give me a reason to care for these characters. And right now, they're not giving me a reason for me to think, yo, these characters got something good to about them that's gonna make me want to root yeah. for them. It's more that it, it, to me, the track that they're running, especially by revealing that Maximus has this. You know, tactical team on Earth essentially hunting down in humans. To me, they're trying to make it seem like, well, Maximus is the bad guy, so you got to see him as the bad guy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's kind of like they're saying, well, Maximus has done these bad things. We're showing you right now. We're showing the cards. Yes. As opposed to making Maximus this charismatic leader. And he doesn't seem very charismatic, to be honest, when he's interacting with these people. He just seems, seems like very a cookie you know, typical cutter. politician. Yeah. Yes. Yes, very cookie cutter. He's out there. He's manipulating people. He's getting people killed, and then he's just lying to them. Like I mean, we've seen this like a thousand times. He's up on top of some, you know, horrible CGI of uh, of a building, <laughs> 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 talking about, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. you've been subjugated, oh, but I'm here, and we're gonna change things. No, he's not gonna change things. Yeah. And another thing to what you said earlier about how the humans, or specifically the royal family, see people without powers. 
Uh, actually, I remember when, when I was watching, I wrote this down. Uh, they were, because they have surveillance on Earth. And this is this, I don't know, to, maybe I'm looking too much into this, but it's weird that they have this super advanced technology and have surveillance on Earth. And they just think the only thing that's coming off out of Earth is just death and destruction. And, you know, they, they kind of make a few, they, they, they have a few lines where they talk about, oh, if, if we ever come in contact with the humans or if we go to Earth, that will automatically lead to war. Mm. Was just, I mean, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of terrible things going on. But if, if you live on the moon, you got that kind of technology that you can spy on humans. You, you can see that there's a lot more than just some, you know, wars and tragedies and things going on here and there. And, and I don't know how you just He's, come in contact with humans would automatically lead to a war. Well, I think that leads to what Black Bolt is probably hiding. You know, you kind of alluded to the idea that he seems like this leader who has his reasons for not wanting to go to, wanting to, go to Earth. And I think, you know, Black Bolt has repeatedly said, trust your king. Mm -hmm. You know, or not really said because he can't mm -hmm. talk. Or he can, but he can kill everybody yeah. in the room. Or turn him into Jackson, Jackson Pollock <laughs> like he did to his, his parents. But why, though? But, he, but why? <laughs> why? I was cracking up when he did that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, maybe he know, Maybe he has his reasons for why they shouldn't go to Earth. And he just hasn't spoken about it. Maybe Medusa knows, too. Maybe Medusa's in mm -hmm. on it. Sure. But the the ba the bottom line is is it unfair to me to for me to expect that there has to be a villain and there has to be a protagonist or hero because to be honest, you know the Inhuman comics as you said yourself have always kind of showed the Inhumans towing the line and maybe that's what they're intended to do to show that the Inhumans don't necessarily always do the right and the right thing sometimes they do things that are wrong for from yeah from our point yeah, of view. and you know that maybe they're intentionally being this that way. would have been really interesting and really compelling storytelling but i mean judging from what we've seen i really don't think that they're gonna i guess be faithful to that vision of this property because uh you know if they would have taken an approach where the good guys they present them as the good guys but as time develops you see that they have to cut corners and they have to do things that good guys typically don't do. And then the bad guy who, for whatever reason, you know, however you want to present him, is seen as a bad guy. But then you see him, even though he's a bad guy, he's fighting for something that's good. That can make for something really compelling and really interesting. But like you've said, I mean, aside from the shoddy quality of the writing, the delivery, the fight scenes. Uh, oh, God, the fight the scenes. The editing. Jeez. Uh, you know, these are things that, you know, we, we usually, like a lot of the things we watch, superhero shows, movies, we, 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 we cut them some slack. We're not expecting like Academy Award winning quality things. You know, we, we, we just want to make sure that we, we come in and we have fun. But when we can't have that fun, that's when everything just kind of breaks apart and we have to really just analyze like what, what's wrong here. And sure, I think that's a good, good point. A good point. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's why we're sitting here talking about this. And trust me, I was one of those people that I wanted. Like I thought, I like when kind of uh, things that aren't big or popular in Marvel are kind of taken and they're done. They they do something interesting with them. Oh yeah. And, and you know, the Inhumans could have been something. You know, royal family take like a Game of Thrones type of approach. You know, you involve the whole thing about the the cast. Uh, aspect the cast uh the different the cast system they have in their society uh one thing that sure. they've i don't know if they're gonna bring in or they seem like they've just taken out is terror genesis the fact that is actually seen as like a religious type of thing in the comics mm. where it, it's as opposed to it just like being something that they use to determine your role in society yeah here. yeah and and i mean it kind of it's kind of like that in the comics but I mean, it, did, it didn't seem as religious because they had like the genetic council member there, as opposed to someone who seemed more. I guess I guess you're correct about that. Yeah, yeah I can see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, and and, and also the the topic of eugenics, which I think that brings up a lot of interesting uh, things you can talk about. Uh, you, Absolutely, you know, and, and it's it could almost be because again they've desperately been trying to make the humans into the X Men, but I think they're similar but they're sort of like a different side of that same coin where the yeah the x-men deal with mm. eugenics but they're the downtrodden while the inhumans yeah. are in power and in control and they're the ones that have to rule over people and make those decisions and really think about like you know is this right how do we go about this this is our history this is our tradition 
you know, how do we, how do, how do we uh, reconcile with the two? And I really don't see any of that going on with this show. It's just very basic. Just one brother's jealous of the other, takes over. Uh, <laughs> the humans finally have to deal with humanity. And and I don't know. I think that's really all that I got out of this these episodes. It just wasn't very interesting and compelling. I guess to answer the essential question here is like, you know, is Maximus the villain? Yes, because they tell us to. But really and truly, when you look at the society, whether or not, I mean, he's probably going to turn out to be a dastardly bastard. But regardless of what he turns out to be and what the Inhumans currently are, like what the royal family currently, you know, yeah. is, nobody's the hero. They both are they both suck because I mean, yeah. they're both having these people just be here and be at the whims of of their genetic analysis. Yeah, I, I can and say I dis classifying them based. I can on say that. I dislike Maximus. It's ugly. The least compared to the other characters. Yeah, I I can't I can't even say I dislike him the least per se. But I'm saying I'm like when I when he talks I'm like I feel you. <laughs> I don't trust you, but I feel you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying with Black Bolt. I'm just like. Uh, you know, you're a king and you were letting this happen. With Medusa, you know, like, I have my own problems with how they portray Medusa. Um, because, I mean, just real quick, you know, they, the way they cut off her hair, you know, they I felt like in the comics, she kind of made it more of an empowering moment where, you know, she's kind of, essentially, she it is, it's alluded to in the comics. Because there's a scene where Maximus does cut her mm -hmm. hair off in the comics. But she alludes to the fact that she let it happen on purpose, you know, just to kind of... You know, in a way, just kind of get rid of him. Let him think he got the, the W, but really and truly, she's like, yo, when I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you. You know, that type of situation. And, you know, in this one, you know, I, I, I felt like Serena Swan did a great job with the emotion of it. But, like, the music that was playing was just silly. Him sawing at her head with a razor. Where the hell did he get a razor from? <laughs> they got razors on the moon that look exactly like the Earth ones? Like, I, I mean... I, I mean, I'm just, I mean, that's just me nitpicking, but I just felt like, you know, the, the way, nothing felt compelling, especially, you know, going back to the, the notion that you said they dropped us like right in the middle of the story, mm -hmm. like Maximus having a, a, a history with Medusa and, and essentially being attracted to her. Yeah. Never talked about mm -hmm. that. Like they, they just kind of just, it was like, oh, I guess he likes her. You know, it's like one of those yeah. things, you know, the, it could have, they had no backstory about maybe him and, him and Medusa spending time together as kids because he said they did. She was like, oh, I don't remember that. And then you see her say, oh, I'll never forgive you if you do this. Like, that would have felt like that would have been something more if they had, like, established that prior to. Yeah. Even having Black Bolt kill his parents as, as opposed to it being a random flashback. You know? I mean, oh, don't even get me started <laughs> on the flashbacks, brother. That Medusa and, and Black Bolt flashback, brother, she's like, Hi, I am Medusa. Everyone is scared of you. I am not. He was just like, mm. he was, he's like, mm. he was just looking at it. I was like, this is the, probably the worst acting thing I've ever seen, bro. I was like, I just, I was like, the villain of the story is whoever wrote this this bad scene for me to watch. I was like, that's the true villain. Scott Buck, you the villain of the Inhumans, brother, because you're out here killing this show and not in a good way. That's what I'm going but, with. But, I mean, let's, let's not forget that there may be some sabotage involved in this final product because there how you how you, how you how i you mean figure? there was uh oh we're going we get into espionage i'm, over I'm here. just What's saying going on? there was supposed to be a movie we know this and then yeah. that was kind of kiboshed i mean ike perlmutter the head of uh disney uh this he really wanted to kind of make the Inhumans, and this seems to right. The rumors say the rumors say, the rumors yeah. say he really wanted the Inhumans to be made, and you know there's there's been resistance between him and Kevin Feige, uh, and that's why they've shifted things so that Kevin Feige doesn't even answer to him anymore. Kevin Feige literally just runs you know Marvel Studios on you know without even having to talk to Al Pike, Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter just handles the TV side of things, or I should say he oversees the TV side of things. Jeff Lowe is is really the Kevin Feige of TV for Marvel uh, television. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, given how Hollywood is, you know, it's a small town. Everybody knows everybody. They could have done better than, you know, the director and the writers for this show. And, and there are reports that apparently they had maybe like, what, that's like 10 days an episode to film? Yeah, it was, it was 20 days total to film all those episodes. Yeah, and, and you know, two episodes, I should say. I'm sorry. On that. 
Not all on average, episodes, it's like 15 episodes. plus for most other shows. For 15 days yeah. per episode. So they were definitely, uh, I guess, being being rushed. They were they definitely had their backs against the wall. Plus, it's on Fridays. And and now that's automatically the death. That slot. is a death slot. We saw. We already it with, know that for TV. We saw it with Constantine. I believe they put it on Friday, which actually I think people actually liked. Mm-hmm. You know, Constantine was a show that was liked, but it didn't get watched. I mean, listen, Friday Friday nights is, quote-unquote, the death slot. That's where you put shows to mm-hmm. die. That's where you put... If you put a show on Friday, it's just not going to get watched because most people are not home. They're yeah. out. They're, you know, going on yeah. dates. They're going outside and, you know, going to bars and stuff, going to parties. Yeah. like Or gaming, yeah. streaming, you don't use, et cetera, you don't, et cetera. Yeah, you don't usually put a show that's just starting on Fridays. Yes. You know, and, you know... Obviously, Agents of Shield is going to follow up. Yeah. Uh, you know, Inhumans once Inhumans is finished. But we but heard. We already know there's yeah. been. I mean, there's been problems with Agents of Shield also. Yeah. You know, where ABC didn't even allegedly didn't want to actually renew the show and it had to come down from like on high, like the Marvel like synergy gods who were like, "Yo, we want brand synergy. Put this damn show on your network," and it got moved to Friday. Right. I mean, they tried to kill it last season technically by moving it to ten. You don't move a show that you don't move a show that far out of its regular time slot. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I don't know what's going on on Marvel TV, but you bring up a good point. Maybe, maybe in humans, maybe somebody's sabotaging it, man. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I just to me when I look at the situation, if they can't fix this situation with the characterizations and make us make these characters compelling, then humans aren't going to see the light of day in Marvel properties for a very long time, if ever. At the best, at best, these characters could be moved to another show, potentially as like guest stars or recurring characters. But I mean, they ain't going to Marvel Netflix. Way too <laughs> grounded. Like, Marvel Netflix is trying, like, they try their best to not even get any any craziness going on like the humans. I mean, it's p- entirely possible that could change. You know, so there's been rumors of series these like series like you know Blade and Moon Knight and all these other you know semi supernatural characters. So it's possible, but you know, to the humans are super powered, and you know Marvel Netflix they're not gonna go there. Agents of Shield might even be on his deathbed. It may season five may be his last season. I don't know what these characters are gonna. The humans, this was their shot. They shot their shot, and you know. <laughs> The buzzer might sound before <laughs> before they released. I don't know. The buzzer might have sounded before they released. Nah, I don't it's know. A, it's a swaggy P kind of brick. Shoot it up. <laughs> you turn around. You celebrate. Then you hear a thing. And you look back and you just realize that you missed. <laughs> that you hit the rim and it bounced off. I mean, Ace of the Shield did the whole humans thing better. And I think if this is already... There's not going to be a season two of this. There may not be another season two of... Uh, I, I mean, not, they may not be another season of Agents of Shield, so I think the Inhumans as a property is is done. Might be dead. That uh, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. The the X Men, sure. as always, the mutants <laughs> still thriving, still thriving. You think they're they're almost eliminated, they're almost done, and they somehow are able to survive being movies and TV show. But it doesn't seem like the Inhumans are going to have quite that same luck. Indeed. That being said, y'all, let us know what you think of everything we said today. Because <laughs> we said a lot. But first and foremost, tell us who you think are the, the villains of the Inhuman series. Uh, do you relate to any of the characters? Do you like any of the characters on the Inhumans? Did you think Inhumans was, was, was really that bad? Maybe we're bugging out. Maybe we're not just like 95% of the people out there. Uh, maybe maybe we're, we're wrong. Maybe we're incorrect. But uh, let us know in the comments below. And by all means, support the Spectacular Spoiler League by hitting that subscribe button, and joining up with the Spectacular Spoiler League. Turn on notifications so that you can be up to date with the latest and greatest coming from the Spectacular Spoiler League. And by all means, hit us with a like to get this video out there so that uh, we can uh, recruit some members to the league and uh, hopefully fight the inhuman uh, wackness that's on television <laughs> together. We can we can riot out front of a Marvel uh, TV or something. I don't know. Maybe we could, we could fix this. Maybe we could salvage this together as a league. But we'll see you guys on the Thanks. next one.